Um, no, no, it's all fine. Okay, sounds good. Um, sweet. Well, I know Gideon can't make it today, so we do have the TC recorder on here. We're going to record this meeting so that he can go through it later. Um, but we do have like a rough agenda for today's time. Um, essentially, I have now finally set up all of the different tasks and subtasks relating to this thing on Clarity. So I wanted to spend just like 10, 15 minutes going through that. And then um, Shar, if you don't mind, we could do like a quick service demo. Um, and then if you have any questions, thoughts in that segment, we can kind of like just discuss it there. And then maybe after that, we can spend just five minutes figuring out like what is the exact launch date. Um, and then we'll work backwards on our side here to make sure that we're doing all of the stuff needed internally to make sure all the other teams are ready. And then I know there was some discussion in one of the channels around um, digital identity stuff. So like praise, outer space, uh, outer space badges and things like that. So there, there were a couple of questions around like phase two stuff, which we may or may not discuss necessarily today, like time dependent, because I know this is only 45 minutes long. And then I guess at the end, we can just see if anybody has any questions left. Um, does that sound okay as an agenda? Or does anybody want to add anything else? Um, yeah, maybe like we can, uh, I think that for me, it's still not clear, like the gardening story, okay. um, exactly what is the flow, like how are the tweet, like not Twitter team, how, how is the um, the role of the gardeners in sense of like the like, we we can discuss may, maybe we can yeah just add it and then discuss it and i will expand mm -hmm. what i mean about it yeah i think that sounds great we can just mm -hmm. um, take it away from this time that's totally fine cool um okay so i think what i can do is just show you guys um what has been set up on clarity just so um everyone involved can kind of go and look in any time to see what projects are in progress, what are still outstanding, what's done, and what are like the timelines and like the owners associated with each thing. Um, this is just so everyone has kind of like a base to check back on. Um, before I get into it though, does everyone present here have access to Clarity and this specific, I guess, project? And you send uh, the link, please? Yeah, definitely. Um, also, Risha and Acid Laser, just so you guys know, if you go to the content curation thread on Discord and, and go to the pinned message, you should be able to find there the link for the for the project. And if you go to the sample main channel and also to the pinned mes message, you can find there like the invite link and the the link for the um, sample home base and everything should be on the pinned messages just for uh, accessibility for everyone. Yeah, thanks for that, Bear. And I've also shared the link to the specific um, page directly in, in our chat right now. So you guys have that handy if you need. So yeah, pretty much this is kind of cool. It's designed as a big milestone under which there's like a couple projects and each project has like a couple tasks. So the, the milestone is kind of just like getting this content curation service active and running. The doc that we'll reference here is, um, as you know, it's the it's the Google doc that we've all been kind of like working on. So that's there. And then we have the um, the different phases. So currently we're on phase one. Um, I'll just click into it so you guys can see what that looks like. So in phase one, the things that we still have outstanding is finalize some of the requirements still. Some of the things are already done, but I guess the two things that are outstanding is um, creating categories and getting buy-in from our team internally, and then also just confirming the stick bot filter rules. Um, and then I know there was a point around confirming the Airtable fields for comms. Um, perhaps we can kind of like walk through that a bit later with Acid Laser, but I think like what we agreed to perhaps last time was just um, essentially export all the fields. So I'll, I'll write that down for now. 
and then we can get to this if this is something that we still have comments on after. Um, yeah, so phase one, sorry, going back into phase one, it was just uh, finalized requirements. We looked at kind of like what was outstanding there. Going back, there was then creating just that internal rollout plan. So we want to make sure we document the Twitter use case process, um, test the Airtable sync, align on name for the service. This is all kind of internal stuff and create guidelines for good versus bad content. Um, so that's kind of the internal, but then there's also the external rollout plan, which is creating some sort of partnership agreement with, with you guys. Um, Shahar, and then also just creating some education and articles around this for actual launch, mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> making sure that we we have like a really well defined sort of like use case with comms as well. So that's that was the external rollout plan, and then of course there's future phases. So there's there's a few things here, but I would these are just kind of like placeholders right now, um, and then document a project trail. So what happens after this is actually launched? What are some of the ongoing things? Um, so that was kind of like the rough stuff under phase one, but then I know there's a lot of stuff that we said we'll push to next iteration. So aligning on how to downvote something was one. Um, there was like some conversation around a Discord command to add stake. I think Gideon had posted about this in one of the docs. And then there's also a conversation on on Discord on investigating identity and, and like how to set up like a content moderation market. And then just making sure we align on the like right incentive structures so that it's designed in a way that really promotes, I guess, like the right kind of usage. Um, so th that's kind of like phase two. Phase three is empty right now, obviously, because uh, I, I don't think we like know necessarily what's happening after that second phase. Um, and then the weekly meetings bucket is just, you know, every every meeting we have, if we've like had any decisions that need to be logged, they're just logged here and the attendees are noted and, and things like that. So um, I think it was really important, I guess, to set this up so that everybody has a lot of visibility because there's lots of moving parts. And there's also many things that we're prioritizing for right now and many things that we're pushing for, I guess, later in the overall timeline. So um, yeah, I guess the ask from you guys is, please, if you have a chance, ha um, go in and review all of the different components. And if you feel like there's anything that you think needs to be added or modified, or if you want to contribute to, just definitely go in and and kind of like add that feedback because this is supposed to be a very collaborative process and just making sure that we, this is supposed to be like the source of truth. And it's, I'm glad that I got to like document like the, like the initial foundation, but it's for everyone to kind of like come together and iterate on. So yeah, we'll pause there and see if there's any questions. All right, okay. Um, that sounds good. So now that that's through, I think we can just move on to Shahar, like if you want to do a demo and, and if you have any open questions that you want clarity on, we can we can just go through that right now. <clears throat> All right. Um... So, yeah, perhaps like um, about, okay, yeah, I see that we, we are going to discuss uh, the ADs later. So, yeah, we can leave that for later. Um, yeah, about phase three, like maybe, I know it's like, maybe it's, it's a little while from now and we need to see like how things unfold, but we do have some, uh, interesting progress in our side, um, which relates to a Twitter integration, like I told you back then, some, uh, you know, like some annotation apps, um, and also a LinkedIn integration. So like we, we want to attach, you know, all of these other endpoints together and, and aggregate like cross platforms. Uh, so you have like we can we we still have like some research to do in understanding exactly what is like the minimal viable service and and from there you know from from where from we need to understand where we want to to get to and and then you know start doing like the most simple things but basically we 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 need to to understand how are we going to construct social graphs and interest graphs like in a in a in a 
like how do you, how do we amalgamate like pr uh, private interest graphs into a whole graph and then you know we, we can we can do much simpler things but uh, yeah like we anyway <laughs> yeah I'm just I, I didn't uh, intend to talk about it so I didn't prepare myself but what what we're what we want to do is basically do the same thing as with uh, with the curation service but add some sort of a social graph and a knowledge graph uh, and sort of amalgamate them and then we can aggregate data across platforms uh, like for example the tc we we can you know we any any tc member can have some sort of passport with uh, with the twitter handle with the discord with uh, linkedin and and then you know like we, we can basically set up like more advanced rules not only over discord but over many other um interfaces so this is like something maybe for might be worth mentioning for uh, phase three. Um, right. And okay, so about the demo. Um, yeah. So so I'm not sure. Like I I can show you the the app. I guess like we can start with that. Yeah, I think what might be useful is um, since Acid Laser is here, if there was specific questions around fields and stuff. Um, and yeah, so, so basically, like Airtable, uh, I, I tried like to import SCV and and play with it, and Airtable is very is very comfortable. Like it's it's amazing. Like you can basically assign like if if the fields are different. That is, if if the if the Airtable base have a certain fields, and the SCV import have different fields, then Airtable, when you import the SCV, it asks you which field to send to which field. Okay, you you like doing some matching of the fields. I, I can show you that if you yeah. Like. If you if you don't mind, um, yeah, sure. yeah, you can go ahead and share your screen and yeah. ask the paper if you um. If you mind, like, do you mind just kind of like making sure the the use case like works for for the Twitter purposes? Hey, let's. Yeah, I would like to see um, that um, that yeah. process, that chat okay. says I have no idea about that. So. Okay, sounds good. Let's do it. I just know the basics in, so it will be pretty good to see what's up. All right. So can you see my uh, my yes. the air tape? Yeah. Okay, so this is basically like w what I tried to do like so I imported the SCV of from the from the garden. Okay, mm -hmm. so as you see for now like it's still uh, it's not it's not uh, final. We still need to add like uh tags and uh, and timestamps. Uh, but it's still like not in the main branch because DAGs is like a new uh, API. So it's we, we needed to like, uh, you know, like uh, test it before we can merge it to the main branch. So basically we have the the first column is the author. Then you have a, a, a link to the message. So you can just jump, jump right into Discord and see the post in context. And here you have unique user count, which means that you, you see here like how many unique users uh, reacted. That is, you know, everyone can react multiple times to a certain post, but this one, like it counts uh, each user only once. Um, so it's something that we think, ah, okay, we do have. Uh -huh. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, because these are just, you know, like test messages. So here you have the original message. That is that the author wrote this original message. And then you have the editable message, which is what the, what sh maybe we should uh, change the field name because it's like the, me the message that had been edited by the gardeners. Mm -hmm. And here you have 
uh, like the reaction counts, like the unique reaction counts, because you might have multiple uh, reaction of thumbs up, for example, and this one just counts the like how many unique reactions. Here is the Twitter handle, uh, uh, which will you know because now the, it's empty, the fields are empty. But basically, if the Twitter handle uh, field will be occupied, which is just a gardener adding the Twitter handle, so it will also appear here. Uh, here you can see all of the emojis. Um, and yeah, still like the the guild emojis, so they're not visible here. We need to also add that functionality, but it's not super important, I think, for now. Um, it's simply, you, you know, it, it will write the Unicode or whatever. I'm not sure so how. What, we... do you, what do you mean by the guild mm -hmm. emojis? Custom, custom emojis. Like, for example, the TC has some. Um, custom emojis, which are basically just its logo in different uh -huh. forms. So here, like we added to our Discord server, the, uh, like the Twitter, uh, how do you say, like the Twitter um, icon, which when you react with it, it's like signaling, okay, we, we want to tweet this. So, so the bot can recognize the Unicode, but not, but, but it doesn't upload the image. Like, it's possible. We did it already with uh, our bubble prototype, but still we haven't did it here uh, because we think it's not super important right now. But eventually we will do it. Yeah, that sounds good. That looks and pretty good. Yeah. Great. So and here how, is the... yes. How sorry. Can I? How can I help you? Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. So let me just clarify. I think the question was, if this is available as an output based on the um, essentially the service that we're setting up, um, are you able to now, I know you guys have your own Airtable from how you manage um, tweets that are going to go out. So are you able to now export this data in some way and then use it for your own purposes to actually schedule those tweets? So, so basically... Just, yeah, I wanted to get there. So I, ju I just wanted to show you how I import first, and then we can talk about how to sync uh, views. All right? I just wanted to show you the fields. <laughs> okay. Um, that. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, you have more bunch of data over here, but I added fields just to, to check how it, how it, how it works. Um, so basically, now, if I want to import something, I press here, add or import. I have CSV file. You can see the pop-up or not? Yep, we can see it. Great. Yep. Okay. So I'm dropping an SV file, a CSV file. Okay, and mm -hmm. upload. Um, yeah, import. Wait, like I'm still online, right? Can you see my screen? Yes, yep, we can yes. see your screen. All right. Um, yeah, and I exclude the first row and I, I import it. Ah, okay. And yeah, here you see like this little thing, map fields. So this is basically I can, like the CSV file has different fields, the import field, and I have the Airtable field. So I can assign, uh, I, can, I can match between these fields. And you see, I have like other fields which are not assigned, like for example, the tweet and tweet content and blah, blah, blah. So basically I can just um, change the fields. But right now the fields are matching because it's, uh, I created that uh, base with the, with the CSV. So there's no problem, even if the, Twitter Airtable is not exactly with the same fields. We can match. You, you, you simply match the, the right fields to the right, um, like between the fields of the import and the Airtable. So there's no problem. And yeah, then I just import it and it's straight goes in, into rows, uh, lines, sorry. And about syncing tables, so 
for the Twitter table uh, that you guys have in the TC. So you can simply, wh what we can do is, is like, first we, we create a view uh, over that. Um, right, like, hold on. Uh, yeah, views, I can create a view, like a new grid view. Um, okay. okay, and then I can filter out like things which we think are not relevant for the Twitter team to see. Um, like, for example, we don't mind about um, probably like the message ID. Like the Twitter team has no need for the message ID, for example. Um, so, ah, wait, what is it? I'm filtering. No, this is not the right thing. <laughs> yeah, okay, I guess we don't need to filter anything right here. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, okay, yeah, I forgot, sorry. So, you, you basically, you, you, what we will need is two tables. Because for what we what we discussed last time, this is why we need to go over the gardening flow, I think, is that we export everything we have from the garden into an error table. Then like the, the Twitter team is going over this base and then say, okay, this we want to tweet, this is also this is also great, this is also great, and the rest we don't want, right? And then we create a new view. And we filter by um, the Twitter field, tweet field, okay, is checked. And then, okay, and then we're, we have this view of only like the things which are relevant for the Twitter team. And then what we do, we, we sync, we sync this error table. So basically like how you do it like i can show you how to do it but it's not it's not uh, uh but you, you do it uh yeah i'm not i don't remember exactly how you do it but basically it's it's rather standard ah yeah okay you do something like that and then you share you you sync with another base you see like you have here sync this view with another base and you can sync it with the twitter um with the twitter base of the tc and that's it so it's not a big deal like not the fields are not important um and it's very comfortable and they will did a good job over that that sounds good so if i could just um clarify essentially there's a csv that's initially imported into Airtable, and then we would apply a view on it to only see the stuff that's relevant for the Twitter team, and then, then we would sync that with the existing Airtable that the Twitter team uses. Is that like accurate of the uh, of the flow? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, Acid Laser, what are your thoughts on that? How does that sound? Cool. Uh, it's kind of confusing because I. Uh, I don't know too much about the project, but if what what do you need from me? The access to the air table or just to confirm that you can use uh, our air table or or what do you need? Yeah, I think um what we're looking for here is um essentially um so currently you guys have access to an air table that has like a set of things that you may or may not tweet, right? What we're saying is that we want to add more to that list for you and okay. essentially help you kind of like um, like tweet on a more consistent basis with content generated from the service, essentially. So the, the question really is um, whether this would be helpful for you and whether, um, yeah, whether, whether this works, like this overall workflow. Okay, it's it's okay for me. Yeah, it looks good. And if you want to edit something in our, our table, go ahead. There's no problem. Awesome. Yeah, and so I guess like the question is, um, what what is your tweeting schedule look like right now, and um, do you do you uh, see that changing at all in the future? Uh, right now it's kind of empty because 
I have been too too much too much busy these these days and weeks. Actually, today I was going to make some drafts uh, on our air table, but this month's uh, table on our table is kind of empty. But uh, the last months they are pretty good. Uh, they had a lot of, a lot of tweets. But yeah, this this month uh, has been kind of empty on on our table. I I just been uh, tweeting uh, necessary things that I that I think or or people ask me to tweak some some stuff to to promote, and that's has been my workflow uh, this month. But but I I want to uh, get into the air table again. That sounds good. So this is actually going to be really helpful because instead of trying to come up with different things to tweet just to make sure that we're staying active you'll now have this entire essential like essentially a list of things that you could tweet yeah. out at any moment so it's i think it'll be really helpful actually yeah that's pretty good for me yeah go ahead yeah so then perhaps what we can do is um since we already have this um well okay so essentially i'll i'll explain to you what's happening right now so far, we've just been like testing with the um, with the forum feature called Community mm -hmm. Signal, and I'm sure you've seen it. I I know you were in one of the discussions where we played around with it. So, essentially, what's going to happen is um, the um, the bot that actually picks up that content and then care, like brings it into this this backend database is going to be added pretty soon. I think Rex is working on that, and then once that's done, we'll have the CSV that we can now start kind of like syncing into Airtable and then syncing to the Twitter Airtable. So that's coming up pretty soon, just so you understand where things are at right now. Cool. Yeah. Sounds good. Sweet. Back to you, Shahar. Um, all right. So I guess what, what I would like to do right now is just go over um the workflow of the gardeners like how is it going to have to happen exactly so i thought like perhaps um all right what i do all right. sorry like what happens um okay so so what i thought about is maybe i can suggest the workflow and then you know you can we can think about it like is it a good idea or, you know just to, just to start off and yeah. sounds yep that sounds good to me and i'll i'll take some notes as well as we go through it i'm back on the meeting okay meeting page. okay so like uh, for an example okay so the the gardening process okay so it divided it 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 is divided in to um to like uh epochs you know like just let's say one week you know each time there's like a one week where uh, you know at the end we export the csv file into the air table and then you know we can also sync it with the twitter team and then the twitter team can uh, tweet stuff and we can also just you know uh, you can also just um, publish like a Airtable gallery that showcases all of the cool content um, that from the last week, like the best of last week, sort of like a weekly newsletter. Is a newsletter you can think about it like that. And okay, so how is how will the work look like? So the most simple workflow would probably be just um, all the all of the gardeners are will have like a meeting a weekly meeting where they just uh, you know uh, gather in a, in a discord and look over the content together and just you know audit and edit and uh, decide what's what should be in the garden and what should not be and like this is the most simple uh, thing to do it just you know you need to to be in sync with everyone and to get them to come to a meeting which is not that simple as we already seen <laughs> and another option is doing it uh, asynchronically and then one person will be in charge of exporting it like anyway you need one person 
that will be in charge in exporting the CSV file just because so you won't have like complications, you know, like duplicates messages or you will miss by accident some messages and etc. Um yeah, so what what do you think? Um so I think I'm confused on one part. Mm -hmm. Previously I think we said um things would make it to the um the the database if there was like more than a certain amount of emojis. Yeah. Like yeah. are we Definitely. still doing that? Yeah, so okay, okay, let, let's go through the whole flow. Okay, so posts are posted in the forum. Uh-huh. Uh, community members react on the content. Mm -hmm. And each message that passes the threshold of five emojis, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, goes into the top messages board in Stig site in our uh, application. Okay, then over there, gardeners have access to the to this table, and they can decide what is going to be moved to the garden yeah. from, from the top messages. Which, like for me, I think it's just so, sort of a you know like a moderation process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then in the garden, you can edit the content. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know if there's like. Uh, very bad, like uh, typos or or stuff like that. So you know, like gardeners can edit it, mm -hmm. and and then after after like the pro like everything was you know like the la the whole week messages went were went through the like, uh, the gardeners. Sorry, I'm very tired. Oh, no it's okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so after that, it's one person will be in charge of exporting the SCV and uh, import it into the Airtable. Yeah, I think this is actually a really clear flow. The only thing that um, we discussed that I'm not sure if it exists or not anymore is um, can gardeners, when the posts are actually still in the forum, um, mark something to be picked up by the stick bot or no? Do we do we get rid of that? We we didn't do that. Okay. We we discussed only like the buzz rule. We can definitely do it, right? Uh, we just need to to program that uh, that rule. It's not hard. It's just we need. But in in this case, we need to either have a list of gardeners or have a a role gardener role, and mm -hmm. then you know give much more weight to reactions by gardeners. Yep. Um... I, I remember that conversation. Um, I think we should definitely keep that decision open, but still ship with the current version. And then we can always bring that into future iterations if everyone feels strongly. So I will keep that as yeah, a note. If, if, you think, uh, if you think it's useful, I, I don't think it's hard. Like it's, actually, it's rather simple to add that rule. OK. Um, Maybe I'll I'll kind of like go through the advice process with a couple members on the team, um, mm -hmm. and then kind of come back on this. But maybe I'll also ask the team right now. What does everyone think? Do we think it's important for people to be able to like a couple of people who have the gardener role to be able to go into the forum and even if a thing doesn't have five emojis, essentially mark it as valid to get into the garden and then into the air table. Does anyone have thoughts on this? I'm sorry, I was a bit distracted. So, uh, is that's that's um, that would be so the gardener can decide whether something is relevant or not. I know. Exactly. Yeah. Regardless of the emojis, this is like in the forum itself. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I don't. I don't generally think so. I think if we were to do so, it would have to be under very precise circumstances because I believe it defeats the purpose of curation if you have one entity that can, you know, uh, control the curation. Um, I, I can see value on, say, the comms team seeing something relevant and cool enough to be posted 
but I'm not sure how would that sort of uh, interact with the gardeners. Are the gardeners part of the comms team or, you know, like the relationship between that? Can, can uh, you repeat that? I didn't get... Yeah, so, so what I think is um, it, it is dangerous to have an entity, say the gardeners, to be able to decide whether something is relevant or not on a curation service that's supposed to, to signal community preference. Now, I can see some value in a team like communications seeing something that sort of fits the whatever, whatever, um, what uh, I forgot the name, like whatever planning they have on, whatever content planning they have on, and take that outside of the creation service. But we should figure out then how does that interact with the gardeners? Are the gardeners part of the communications team? Um, are the communications team part of the gardeners, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, like I, I think this this question right here is relates to the purpose of the gardener. Like, is the gardener simply a moderator or is the gardener a super curator? Mm -hmm. um, so right now, like in, in this flow where gardeners don't doesn't have um like the ability to to singly pick uh content and push it to the air table to the garden so right now the the sole purpose of the gardener is being a moderator just checking that everything abides like the you know the standards um and and then you know push it to the garden if we if we give like gardeners the this ability so they're super curators right and I, I agree with the point of view that then it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, but I would say that if we are to like start to decentralize the um, the role, this role, the gardener role, then we might start to think about how um, how we can give gardeners more um, weight with. Uh, with in the curation per, per process itself, and then turn them also to to these uh, super curators, but it will be in line with the with the community value in that sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and um, I I think probably for now we will leave it as is and just think a little bit more on this topic before we move forward. So I've captured everyone's thoughts for now, but um, I don't think we need to work on it in terms of actually building the feature. So, Shahar, for the gardening workflow, um, your question was, like, what is the process? And essentially, like, I guess you want to make sure that we also agree with the process. Um, so the process right now is we're saying um, gardeners go into the top messages section and essentially edit the content. And then once a week, they export the CSV and import to Airtable. That's, that's roughly what you're proposing, right? Um, yeah, but but yeah, I, I would I would like to to know like exactly how do you think you're going to use it? Like exactly, we who are the people which are going to uh, go inside the garden or the top messages and uh, and audit stuff, etc. Because then you know we we can think how we can uh, improve that to that specific flow towards that specific flow? Yeah, I, I think um, it will be most likely a member of the comms team as well as somebody who's also liaising with the comms team and Sampo. So I, I think like Irem is definitely like should be one of them, maybe somebody from the comms team as well. And then could be one other person, but I think that's roughly how we were thinking about it. Yeah, no, no, that that I understand. You already sent me a list of uh, Discord members, uh, Discord addresses that would have access. What I'm asking is how exactly will will it will it go? Like, is there going to be like a meeting where all the gardeners are discussing the messages which are the top messages and then deciding together, or it will be uh, asynchronically? And so, and if so, if it is. Uh, asynchronically, so how exactly will, will you will you manage that? 
yeah um maybe maybe i'll open it up to Irem. Irem, just for your context um we're just wondering so now that we have access to these um th this content i guess in the in the database what how do we actually want to like move that to the twitter com side and like what is the frequency and like what is like the process around it do you have any thoughts on that yeah, yeah. That is, um did you um discuss what, back on what we were talking about last week like um how are we gonna so we have to put a time frame ourselves right because like if if we can't coordinate well then like the same tweets would be downloaded twice and all that um yeah. so okay so i guess that's something me uh and ac laser we can do it together and um decide on what like what are the be best practices maybe we can do in every sync like every twitter sync weekly twitter sync we can spare some time for it and then have our own like weekly meeting to do it together or just like splits from one week to another one week me one week um him or we can i mean i can totally take it over too we just have to set yeah clear rules so there's no double counting or double downloading but in terms of um in terms of the sync to sync of the air tables what um did you did you talk anything at all about yeah. that yeah yeah we did we we went through like what that actual mapping looks like it's actually really straightforward um so i can i can show you that a little bit right afterwards but essentially the whole premise is that um data can be done on like a weekly basis so it's going to be available and we essentially have to just go in and import that stuff into Airtable and then sync it with the Twitter Airtable. So I think like whether you want to do it on a weekly basis, on a bi-weekly basis, or even um, faster than that, like it just, it really depends on kind of like your workflow itself and how you want to design that. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. I think weekly at least um, is a good starting point, especially now we don't have like how much um content in in flux we're gonna get so that's a good place to start and yeah i think just like in terms of like us coordinating together acid laser or um if it starts like becoming a lot of work maybe we can um ask help from calm steam or at least like spare a part of the weekly twitter um sync time uh, yeah this. we can we can think about this in the weekly Twitter syncs on, in comps on Mondays. We can okay. use a, a part of the call for, for, for this. Perfect. So I've I've marked that as such. I'm just taking notes. Made that yeah. kind of like comment as a decision. Well, so just, just to make it clear, so what you're saying is part of the Twitter process uh you will spare time to go inside the top messages and audit like moderate these messages like decide what is uh, not appropriate to um uh, uh wait wait a second um yeah sorry just got my car keys um so so it will be a part of that meeting, like where you go through the top messages and decide what goes to the garden, and it will be part of the Twitter meeting as well. Can, can yeah. you, please? Um, can you say something? Yeah, if you can repeat that, please. Okay, because because like from. For me, what I see, there's like two two different uh, functions here. Like one, you decide what goes uh, from like top messages. Top messages is every mess every post from the forum that re that had more than five reactions, like or maybe starting with five. And then you have like a then then like the gardening process is just deciding, okay, um, some messages are inappropriate, so they won't go to the garden. Then from the garden, you export a CSV file to the Airtable, and then you decide what's going to be tweeted or not. So like, 
starting from deciding what goes from top messages to the garden. So this is this will be also a part of that meeting. Yeah, I think um, Irem probably did have that context when she suggested they do it in the um, Twitter sync. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they're saying they actually do the review of top messages to Garden and then do the export to Airtable in that session on Mondays. And then in terms of just like when they want to make the tweets, that's like ad hoc whenever, whenever um, okay. I get yeah. yeah, but I yes. have a question. Yeah. Who, who is doing that? Doing all, the all doing the process. The, us, you and me, in this case. <laughs> Wait, which process exactly? Like this um, editing of the um, like all star content and then putting it into Airtable. Yes, all the process that Cha said. I mean the com. I mean it would be me and like you. Um, like we thought of it that way, but also like if um, I mean in terms of timing, like you don't have that um, that capacity available right now. We can like I can also take on more and just like propose and um again like the Twitter or comms group to see like if there's anyone else would be willing to help. Um. Okay. And, um... um Rose. Maybe yes. on next Monday, uh, we should try uh, this. And if I see that it's too much work, maybe we can find another contributor. But I will be there. So. OK, OK. And like the Twitter, in terms of tweeting the content, it would just be, I mean, it would just be an addition. Like every single day, we would just. I mean, we can talk about that too, right? Like, are we going to tweet every single day? Like, as a, do we want to have a sustainable, like, um, patterned flow of it? Like, every single, like, a GM message with a chosen um, all-star content versus, like, do we want to just dump them, like, on a weekend, et cetera? So, like, those things, I think it's the best with to brainstorm with the comms team just because, like, you guys already have some... Um, Probably experience okay. an insight into how to best engage on that level. So, okay. yeah. Yeah, like, do do you do you use like the the Airtable automation for tweeting? Me? Yeah. No, I just draft in Airtable and then copy and paste Twitter. Ah, okay. I see. So. Yeah, maybe you should consider like using Airtable has this automation, like built in, in automation for Twitter. So if you have like a lot of uh, new content arriving and you want to like uh, space it up and, you know, like not working too much, so you can try and use it for, like, for, uh, for uh, Airtable to post automatically tweets after okay. you draft. I'll, I'll check it out. Yes, credential stuff, and it's it's very um complicated. But... <laughs> yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I need to uh, uh talk with transparency that I'm going to link the Airtable to Twitter and all this stuff. But well, I'll check it out. Yeah. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. What do you mean? Um, maybe just as a, as a quick idea that I was thinking right now, uh, maybe it would be good to plan like a, like a test, you know, uh, where you guys can do all the process once and see how it works, how you feel, like if you're missing any pieces, if you're missing any people, like, I, I think, think that, that's that could help. Yeah. yeah, I think that sounds really good. Okay, so I'm just going to write a note that uh, flush out and do process. Do the process, and if um, if more resources are needed, just like reach out for help. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, cool. So I I know we went a little bit over, and maybe there's just like generally it's supposed to be 45 minutes long, but um, 
I guess like one last question before we can kind of part ways is um, uh, what date should we aim for to kind of work backwards from and make sure all the teams internally are also kind of like ready and prepped? Uh, so I, like, I think you can, in, you can start working with it in the moment, um, in the moment you, you, you will be able to invite the bot. Uh -huh. There's some complication. You can start just experimenting, experimenting with that, right? Because the, the forum channel is already, is already online and people post stuff. So uh, there's no reason not to start and using it and experimenting. And yeah, and then perhaps when, like, I think that probably like two weeks from now, if, if we, uh -huh. we understand the, the full process, like of the gardening and of uh, how, how it's going to look, what is the threshold? Do we need something? Something is missing. So we need something extra. So then, you know, maybe it could be announced like uh, broadly a little bit later, but we can already start to working to so already start to work with that. Yeah, I, I really like that workflow. Just kind of start using it, make sure that we understand it, make sure that our process is fleshed out. And then uh, once all of that's set in stone, we can actually just do the broader launch. So I like that. I think that means that we're looking at essentially the second week of October to launch. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Sweet. But, yeah. You can start doing it all already like next week, probably. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Um, I know there was that final point on discussing DIDs, but I'm going to slot that in for the next meeting because we are at time. Um, but we'll pause here to see if anybody has any extra thoughts or questions. Um, maybe also just like as a, as a quick comment again uh, for the for the launch. Uh, I don't know if you guys have already discussed this of you know having some like communications campaign or strategy for announcing the launch of the actual service uh, through the different uh, means we have. I don't know Twitter or the newsletter or I don't know, but something there for the to prepare something for the launch. Yeah, definitely. We I do have a task set up in terms of like figuring out working with probably a RAM and, and the comms team to figure out what the launch plan is. Um, but I'll, I'll also make a note that we need to make sure we do that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it needs to be all of those, right? I think um, newsletter, Twitter, um, anything else we can do like a party on our discord i don't know maybe that's that hasn't been that active um like those discord parties or we could do um short amas um um or maybe even a twitter space nt the last one was so successful so it could be something we think about but maybe i missed it sorry in terms of launch when is what what's the timeline i think we're saying so that uh, we go for second week of October because we can actually start using the service like as soon as that bot is invited to the community signal channel. But we're, we don't really want to do a wide launch until we've nailed down the process of mm -hmm. essentially like pulling the content out and then actually using it for Twitter and things like that. So after that's sorted, we can we're ready to launch essentially. Uh, I'm sorry. I know we are at the top of the hour now, but uh, just a very quick idea. With the AMAs, I think we have also the opportunity to invite some of the authors of those posts to come to the community or just do, do something with them to promote the service. Like, I don't know, there's there's posts from Michael Sargum, from, um, from the Praise Guys, and, you know, we are super close to them. Yeah, that sounds good. I think these are good ideas, adding them in. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Um, this is really awesome, guys. Like all the meeting notes have been taken, and I'll and I'll share the link with you after this too. In the interest of time, though, I will let you go now. Um, I think like our most actionable next steps are just um, having that bot invited to the channel and just nailing down the exact process for pulling the data 
reviewing the data, pulling it out, and then syncing it to um, the, the comps air table. So I, I'm going to write those down as like our immediate action items. But if, if there's nothing else, um, have a good rest of your day. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. That was great. Thank you, Risha. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.